Member for Oak Bay Gordon Head. Thank you, Honourable Spe Spe Speaker. It gives me enormous pleasure to stand and speak to Bill 4, the Election Amendment Act. And I do appreciate the last speech that the member opposite gave because we won't be seeing him back in a few months. Um, the that, that, member, that, that member's landslide victory of over 200 votes of over 200 votes is likely in jeopardy in light of the fact that this government, Honourable Speaker, is not listening to the will of the people. Time and time again, it has been made very clear, Honourable Speaker, that what the people of British Columbia want is big money out of politics. This government's response, Honourable Speaker, through this bill is to rub it in their faces a little more often, hardly listening to the, to the people of British Columbia. You know, what, what, has this bill, what is this bill doing? It's essentially saying you've got to report out the egregious donations you're getting from any union, any corporation, any individual, anywhere in the world. Because in BC, only in the wild west of BC, can any person, any union, any corporation, anywhere in the world donate any amount of money they want to any political party any time. Like, you can't make this stuff up. You can't make this stuff up. There's a reason why the New York Times laugh at us. There's a reason why people around the world laugh at us. This government says, you know what, we're doing this because it's right. No, they're doing this because it serves them right. It serves, the, it serves their wishes because they know that their donors will donate vast amounts of money to ensure that they remain in power. And what happens when you've been in power for so long, Honourable Speaker, is the level of arrogance with which you govern becomes unbearable. The fact that we have a government here that has lost touch with the people of this province, a government that under its watch has created a disparity between those who have and those who have not, like no other jurisdiction. A government that only reacts reactively to issues rather than thinking about the proactive response. A government that is so cynical that it makes a, un, un, an unpredicted windfall from an out-of-control speculative re, re, real estate market. And what do they do with that money? What do they do with that money? Not what most British Columbians want. Most British Columbians would say, you know, you've created a problem. Use that money to help solve the problem you created. Did that money go into affordable housing? Did that money go to assist people? No. No, it didn't. It went back to try to incentivize an out-of-control market by giving people who can barely afford a mortgage an interest-free loan. It's reckless. It's reckless, Honourable Speaker. This government is out of control. It's out of control, Honourable Speaker. And this bill, Bill 4, exemplifies that. Bill 4 that essentially says we're not here to listen to you, that our corporate interests are far more important than the actual interests of the people of British Columbia. Unions don't vote. Corporations don't vote. We got union and corporate donations. And in fact, Honourable Speaker, the party that I lead, the BC Green Party, started receiving an uptick. Historically, it had been about 10, 12, 13, 14 percent of our donations. In the fall, it started to pick up, Honourable Speaker. Two unions donated to us, and we're very grateful that they did. And a major international cor corporation donated to us, and we're very uh, grateful that, th that it did. But we didn't like the direction that was heading, Honourable Speaker. And we wanted to show leadership because we recognize that unions don't vote, corporations don't vote. And so what did the BC Greens do, Honourable Speaker? We banned union and corporate donations from our party. We banned them, and immediately upon doing that, the people of British Columbia responded, and our fundraising went through the roof. Honourable Speaker, as a party, we raised nearly a quarter of a million dollars in the month of December alone, and each and every penny was donated by individual people with an average donation of about $58. Honourable Speaker, in January, in February, in March, we are shattering historical records by more than 500 per cent in our fundraising. Again, each and every penny coming from people, not unions or corporations. That's how the people of British Columbia responded, Honourable Speaker. But what do we have here? What do we have here? A government that actually doesn't want to re represent the people. A government that says, we, a government that says, you know what? If you want to get something done in BC, you got to pay. It's pay for play in BC. Let me give you a bunch of examples, Honourable Speaker. If this, if this government doesn't believe it's pay for play, then this government would simply do what's right. They would say, we're not going to accept union and corporate donations. They would have brought a bill like this that said, we're not going to uh, 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 accept them. 
but they're not. They're afraid because they don't have the support of regular people. They have the support of the corporate elite that they can fund adver advertisements and fill the airways, not only with taxpayer money, Honourable Speaker, not only with the taxpayer money advertising MSP premiums that aren't even going to come into effect till next year, but also, also to try to brand various people and groups in the way that they want them to be seen in British Columbia. Honourable Speaker, this is the banana republic of BC under this government. This is not what we expect in a, in, 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 in a, in a democracy. So what do we have? We have reporting a little more often. Now, if you raise $100, that's going to be reported out. So all those people who want to give 100 bucks are now going to have to be reported out. That's fine. That's fine. We can live with that. But it, it's, again, all it's doing is shoving it in your face. When you know, when you know that people tell you that they are donating to the BC Liberals because they feel they have to, when you get these people contacting your office saying that, you know there's a problem in BC. And if they think that that's not happening in this province, they, have, they are out of touch. You know, that's why I'm convinced that British Columbians, you have seen the voter turnout drop in BC over many years. British Columbians have become cynical. They've become cynical in this government. This government, Honourable Speaker, that runs like an oligarchy with less than one in four registered voters supporting them. 75% of British Columbians did not support these, the BC Liberals in the last election. But they feel disenfranchised. How we move forward, Honourable Speaker, how we move forward is to get people actually to vote in the upcoming election. Because a high voter turnout means this government is gone, and whatever combination of other, others in this, in this room that forms, the other, forms government, whatever combination forms government, will deal with this. We'll deal with this and actually bring politics back to the people of British Columbia. We've dealt with this proactively. The official opposition have promised to deal with it if they get elected. I believe them on that. I just I wish, obviously, that they had done it as well earlier on, but, but I believe that they will. So I, 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 I'm, you know, obviously this bill will not pass, and we don't even have time to pass it, Honourable Speaker. It's, it's Wednesday, and we're rising tomorrow. We've got to go into committee stage, but we've already been booked off. Lieutenant Governor and Council is coming at 11.45. How cynical can you get, Honourable Speaker? We're debating a bill that the government has no intention of passing because we're rising at 11.45 tomorrow. What a hypocrisy we are seeing play out with us here, Honourable Speaker. This bill, it's not a prop, it's actually the bill, is not worth the paper it's written on because this government has no intention of passing it. This government is doing this purely as a ploy, purely as a ploy to distract from the ongoing RCMP investigation into the funding of their party by lobbyists who backbill the corporate clients. And then who actually, in, in the article by Kathy Thomason, point out that they claim the personal tax receipt. And they claim we'll cooperate, but we don't know anything about it. That's, I cannot wait for this RCMP investigation, Honourable Speaker. And what I hope, what I hope is we get to some truth. And my dream would be this government would be fined millions and millions of dollars so that the playing field in BC is actually fair and level. Fair and level playing field that is not propped up by the companies that donate to them. Let me give an example. Whose interests are being worked? Let's look at Mount Polly. We had a tailings pond breach. Not a single person has been held accountable. Not a single person has been held accountable. It's, 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 we, we have the investigation, it's not done. Of course it's not done, there's an election coming up. It could and should have been done. We, we have, this Mount Tailings Pond happened several years ago. We know that the company involved is a substantive donor to the BC Liberals, and we know, frankly, that the union that put the workers on were a stamp substantive donor. Sorry, what's that? Right. There are so few Members. conservation officers left in British Columbia, Speaker, because they've, they've cut them all back. No wonder it's taking so long. So, Oh, it is true because in the first cuts in the 2001, when the government first came in, in the first cons uh, uh, we found that mining was in the same ministry as oil and gas. Back in 2001, this government was getting a lot of revenue from mining, and a lot of revenue from mining. And when the cuts came down, that cuts went directly into the, the, the sorry, they were getting a lot of revenue from oil and gas. 
So when the, when the cuts across board came down, they were targeted at mining, not at, not, at, not at oil and gas. And I know that because I work in the School of Earth and Ocean Sciences at UVic, which is, has a geology component. And the BC Geologi Geological Sci Society was, uh, service was absolutely decimated. That's, that's decisions that this government has made. So coming back to it, whose interests are being represented in the Mount Polly case? Is it the people who live in the area? Is it the, oh, okay, oh, Minister of Environment says it is the people's interest. Why is it that they feel, the people there, that they have to contact me? Time and time again, residents are contacting me. The lone green MLA on southern Vancouver Island, because their interests are not being represented by this government. That Shawnigan Lake is another example. Thank you to the member from, from, from Columbia River, Revelstoke. Shawnigan Lake, whose interests are being represented there? Is it the people's interests? Is it the people's interests who actually had to take their own government to court to have their interests represented? The people taking their government to court. Mount Polly, the people there are taking this government to court. Why is this happening time and time again when the people of our province feel that the only way that their interests are heard is by taking this government to court? I'll tell you why, Honourable Speaker. It's because this government cares more about catering to the donors that come to, the, to, to, to their party than it does to actually the people who were uh, voted. Do, uh, do, uh, corporations don't vote, unions don't vote, the people vote, and they ignore the people's voice. And it will be, Honourable Speaker, it will be at their peril. Because let me tell you, it's, you have a very hard time in British Columbia, on, certainly on Vancouver Island, finding anybody who, who believes or admits to voting Liberal. They're so afraid of admitting to vote Liberal. I don't know if they exactly exist. Have you found some there in Vancouver? What, have you found some in Powell River, Sunshine Coast? Uh, if you, if you, my, my friend here has found a couple. I don't know where they are. It, oh, that's right. So there's, yeah, good point. So, Honourable Speaker, obviously I, I cannot support this bill, but it's not really that important whether I support it or I don't support it. Because, as I pointed out, we're not going to pass this bill because this government is be acting yet again so cynically. This bill is so that it's put forward so that they can look to the public like they're fulfilling a, prom a, pro a, a, a promise, like they're listening to the people, that they're actually doing something about the outrageous donations that are happening in this province. They're not. They're not doing that. They're just talking points with this bill, not with the paper it's written on, because we're not going to pass it. We're not going to take this bill into committee stage. Look at the time, Honourable Speaker. It's nearly 5 o'clock, and the speakers are lined up a mile deep wanting to speak to this bill. We can't get to it. And can't get to it. We can't even finish all these speeches. And if we can't finish these speeches, we can't go into committee. And if we can't go to a committee, we can't pass it. This is cynical. So I know I predict what's going to happen, Honourable Speaker. At about 6.30, 6.15 today, a vote will be called, and it will be called on division, and that means this because the, the, the Liberals will try to put a trap in, and all the official opposition and I will stand in, in voting against this, this bill, and all the Liberals, like sheep, will stand and vote against it, even though most of them, frankly, don't even believe the words that are emanating from their own mouth. The Minister of Advanced Education, did you see the Minister of Advanced Education? He was literally laughing as he was speaking. That's, how, that's the level to which this discourse has, has fallen. When people don't even believe what they're saying, people stand up and deliver a speech because they have to, not because it's in them, it's not because they believe in it. So I look, for, I look forward to, I look forward to, this, to, to this, this, this vote, and I look forward to British Columbians recognizing just how cynical this is. I look forward to the legislative press gallery, who I hope are watching right now, who actually will report out that this is a cynical approach that will continue to hold this government in account and point out the egregious nature of the money that flows within. How much money has the oil and gas industry donated to the BC Liberal? Millions, millions of dollars. Is there any reason, any, 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 is there any surprise that here in BC we're fixated on trying to drag ourselves back into the 20th century on LNG? Millions. What do we end up with? Let's look at wood fiber LNG. Wood Fibre LNG, a company that's a big donor of the BC Liberals, the, the, this big project that's being delivered, the subsidy, the per taxpayer su subsidy per job for those 100 jobs is $440,000 a year. That's good Liberal economics. Each and every one of those jobs in Wood Fibre, if it ever happens, is subsidized by the public to the tune of $440,000 a year. 
You could take 880 people on the downtown east side of Vancouver and give them $50,000 a year, and that, Honourable Speaker, would be a greater injection into the BC economy because we know people on the low-income scale spend their money in the economy, don't ship the profits offshore to, to another jurisdiction. This is Liberal eco economics. This is what we get in BC when we have this wild west of corporate donations. You want to play? You pay. When you pay, we'll use the taxpayer's money to subsidize. We'll build Site C Dam. Why do we need the power? We don't need the power. Power hasn't increased since 2005 or so. It's, a, it's flat. We're building Site C. It's going to come in at 13 and a half to 15 cents a kilowatt hour, Honourable Speaker, when all is said and done. About double, maybe even triple what wind would cost. In doing this, we've killed the clean energy sector in BC. We've killed it in terms of its ability to thrive because of the fact that we have power that no one needs. The, oh, the Penticton mayor is all excited about 10 windmills in his riding. Just excited about it. Well, 10 windmills. 10 windmills. Wow, we've got 10 windmills in Penticton. Plus How many do you have a year ago? How many? Uh, see, this is. I would argue that the member from Penticton, who also is about to lose his seat, Honourable Speaker, I would argue that what he should do is actually travel around and recognize that, that Penticton with 10 is, is, is nice. But Vancouver has one. They earn more in tourism from that one windmill than they actually do from energy. The problem here, Honourable Speaker, is they don't, they're out of touch. We have sightsee power. Again, it's a subsidy for a subsidy for an industry that doesn't exist. And the reason why it's being built is because this government, through its corporate and union donations, has decided that they want LNG to happen. Try to squeeze water from a rock, a really big rock, and squeeze no water. They can't. So they, but they, they sign contracts, like the wood fiber LNG electricity contract, like the Shell, oh, there's a go on BC Hydro and Shell signed electricity purchase agreements to deliver into it at, at below market rates. Shell just packed up and left. We don't hear that from this government. So, so we continue to get donations, and they're proposing to rub this in British Columbia's face a little more often and argue that somehow this is transparent. Somehow it's transparent to rub it in their face a little more often the egregious nature of their donations. I don't think so, Honourable Speaker. You know, we need a change, Honourable Speaker. We truly do need a change in our electoral finance. Um, and I sadly don't believe that is exemplified in Bill 4 here. Bill 4, Bill 4 maintains the status quo. In fact, I would argue it takes us backwards. It takes us backwards because it puts an onerous burden on smaller parties. Smaller parties that may be starting out the, the People's Party or whatever, that may raise $55,000 because somebody running it, grandmother, decided that they bequeath $55,000 so their grandchild could start a party. They get thrown into a red tape process like we've never seen before. Oh, I forgot. This is a government that introduced Red Tape Reduction Day. A Red Tape Reduction Day that quietly passed by a few Wednesdays ago. Quietly passed by. We didn't celebrate the red tape, and the irony with that, of course, Honourable Speaker, is any red tape we're reducing. I spent four years here, and I've seen more and more red tape being increased, including the actual act itself, which created another bit of red tape. Then I have, and, and any red tape that is to be reduced would simply have been brought in by this government in the first place because they've been in power so long. You know, Honourable Speaker, when the Red Tape Reduction Day bill was put forward, I, I put in two amendments. One was to peg it to April the 1st. That, that was supported by the opposition, and I was so very grateful when they stood with me in supporting that this moved to April the 1st. Um, the second was to tie it to the fixed election date, and uh, that was voted down again by the government. Uh, I can't recall whether um, the opposition supported it, but I'm sure you would have, because it was, <laughs> but, but, but it was a reasonable to, to tie it to fixed election day. Uh, I mean, the argument I made then, of course, was that the red tape that had to be reduced was brought in by this government in the first place. The best way to reduce this red tape is to replace this government. I'm f very thankful, actually, that I, I think it won't be necessary to actually have that amendment because a BC Green government uh, or a BC Green coalition or a, a BC Green government would eliminate red tape production day and proudly tear up the paper because it's not worth the paper it's on. And the fact is it's not celebrating anything and it's just creating red tape. We didn't celebrate red tape production day this year. Why, Honourable Speaker? We're creating red tape in this Election Amendment Act, creating red tape to ensure that the status quo prevails and that small parties that want to start, that want to start the People's Political Party of, of yeah. New Westminster, small parties, they might want to start, 
Now they get thrown into a red tape nightmare. But I forgot, Honourable Speaker. I forgot. We're not going to pass this bill because we're doing second reading today and we have no time for committee before Lieutenant Governor comes. So it really isn't point, uh, there is, really isn't much point even talking about this. I think I might, might take my own words on that at that point, Honourable Speaker, recognizing that there is little point talking about a bill that clearly is just a cynical ploy by government here, uh, clearly is not going to be passed. Um, so perhaps I would allow one of my colleagues here on the other side to see if they can find some, some words to speak in favour of this bill. I, I'll, be, I'll be listening very attentively. I, I particularly hope the, the member from Port Coquitlam stands up and, and offers some, some, some fine words uh, in, this, in this bill. I'm sure, I'm sure he, he, he would, we would think of a few things to say. Um, I'm also hoping that my friend here in his last speech, my friend from... Oh, my friend from Skeena did his last speech yesterday on this bill. It's, it's kind of a sad way to leave. Uh, I, I agree. So I would like to thank, on behalf of the people of British Columbia, the member from Skeena for giving his last speech on a bill that we're not even going to pass. Because, it's, sorry about that. With that, I'll, 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 I'll sit, take my place in this debate, and I look forward with bated breath to the words in support of this bill, the words, the wise words, the profound words, from the opposite side. I, I can only hope, I can only hope that the member from White Surrey White Rock stands up and speaks to this bill. It would make my day. As his last speech in this legislature, it's a challenge, Honourable Speaker. My challenge to the member from Surrey White Rock is to make his last final speech in the legislature on this bill, because I'd really want to know what he thinks. Thank you, Honourable Speaker.